Under Article 213, the law punishes two acts. The first one is fraud against public treasury, and the second act punish is illegal extraction. Fraud against public treasury is committed when the offender is a public officer or employee. He takes advantage of his official position, that is, he intervened in any contract or agreement in his position. And third element, he enters into any contract or expected, he enters into any contract or agreement with any interested party or into any speculations or any other modes or schemes with regards to furnishing of supplies, making of contracts, or the settlement or adjustment of accounts pertaining to public funds or property. Last element, his intent is to defraud the treasury. In case of fraud against public treasury, for the public officer to become criminally liable, there is no requirement that the treasury, that the government be actually defrauded. It suffices that in entering in this contract regarding the purchasing of supplies, making of contracts, settlements of accounts of the government, his intention is to defraud the treasury. The supply officer of the military was ordered by the chief AFP to canvas blankets for the soldiers in Mindanao and they will be purchasing 1,000 blankets. The supply officer did as instructed. And he was able to find a supplier that sells a good quality blanket at a low price of 500 pesos. Since the orders will be will be in bulk, 1,000, the supplier said he can give it at 500 pesos each. However, the supply officer, before informing the head AFP, talked to the supplier. And he told the supplier that they have to price it at 600 pesos each. The supplier agreed. And so when the supply officer Talk to the head of the AFP, he said, a blanket cost 600 pesos, it is a good blanket. And so they ordered 1,000 blankets and issued a check in the amount of 600,000 pesos to the said supply officer. And the blankets were delivered. What farmer crimes had been committed by the said supply officer? Is the supply officer liable of fraud against public treasury? The supply officer is liable of fraud against public treasury. He is a public officer. He, um, he enters into a contract with abuse of his public position. What was his intention? His intention is to defraud the treasury. And indeed, there is actual fraud. The treasury was defrauded in the amount of 100,000 pesos because the government paid more than what should be paid. The government paid 600,000 pesos, wherein the amount should only be 500,000 pesos. The treasury was defrauded. But what if the same problem? The head of the AFP told the supply officer, you can bust blankets. That would cost, we, will be, we are needing 1,000 blankets. And our budget for that is 500,000 pesos. There is an allotted budget of 500,000 pesos for the purchase of these 1,000 blankets. The General Appropriations Act has been approved by Congress. And in the budget for the AFP, there is this special allocation. Purchase of 1,000 blankets, 500,000 pesos. And the same was approved. And so the order of the said head of AFP is for the supply officer to look for blankets, 1,000 blankets, that will be costing only 500 because the budget approved by Congress is 500,000 pesos. And so the supply officer looked for one. And indeed he found a good quality blanket at the price only of 500 pesos each. So... 500 for 1,000, 500,000 pesos fixed to the budget approved by Congress. However, 
the supply officer connived and conspired with the supplier. He told the supplier that they should deliver poor quality blankets that will cost only 300 pesos. And so, since the government will be paying 500, they will divide between the two of them the, the excess 200,000 pesos. And the supplier agreed. And so the supplier delivered 1,000 poor quality blankets, in reality costing only at 300 pesos each. But the government issued a check in favor of the supplier in the amount of 500,000 pesos. Is the supply officer liable under Article 213, Code Against Public Treasury? The supply officer is not liable under Article 213, Code Against Public Treasury. The treasury is not defrauded. The supply officer is liable under Article 214, Other Frauds. Other frauds is committed by any public officer who, by taking advantage of his official position, shall commit any act of estafa or swindling under Article 315, 316, 317, and 318. The Treasury is not defrauded in the second problem because there is already an allocation in the budget. That amount is particularly for the purchase of blankets. Therefore, the treasury is not defrauded. Where lies the fraud? The fraud is in the implementation of the budget approved by Congress. Therefore, there is deceit, there is swindling. The government was deceived and it amounted to other frauds under Article 214, not under Article 213, fraud against public treasury. The other act punished under Article uh, under Article 213 is illegal exaction. Illegal exaction is committed when the following elements are present. First, that the offender is a public officer charged with the collection of taxes, licenses, fees, and other imposts. And the said collecting public <coughs> officer commits any of the following acts or omission. First, by demanding directly or indirectly the payment of sums different from or larger than that authorized by law, or by paying voluntarily to issue a receipt as required by law for any sum of money collected by him officially, or by collecting or receiving directly or indirectly by way of payment or otherwise things or object of a nature different from that provided by law. These are the elements of illegal exaction. Who is the offender? The offender is a collecting public officer. He is one charged with the collection of taxes, licenses, fees, and other imposts. And if you will notice, the acts or omissions that will give rise to the crime are all involving the rules on collection. It does not involve misappropriation, appropriation, only violation of the rules on collection. Under the first act, a mere demand of a different amount than that authorized by law will already give rise to the crime. Whether it is a greater amount or a lesser amount, or a lesser amount, immaterial, for as long as it, it, as it is different from that authorized by law, mere demand will make the said collecting officer already liable for illegal exaction. After the second act, for every collection made by a public officer, he is mandated to issue an official receipt. If he voluntarily fails to issue the OR, for whatever reason he voluntarily did not issue the OR, he becomes liable for illegal exaction. If, however, he failed to issue the official receipt because he runs out of receipt because of the huge number of people paying, then he is not liable. There is no voluntariness on his part in the non-issuance of the official receipt. It just so happened he runs out of receipt. Under the third act, the act of receiving or collecting 
A form of payment different from that which is required by law makes him liable for illegal exaction. If based on law, he can only receive cash, receipt of checks will make him liable for illegal exaction. So the collecting officer was asked by X, who is applying for a business license, how much must he pay you? The collecting officer at the city treasurer's office said that for the said application for business license, he has to pay 5,000 pesos. And the following day, the said, the, said, um, the said person applying for business license came back and he paid the amount of 5,000 pesos to the said collecting public officer. The said application for license does not cost 5,000 pesos. Based on, the, um, based on the ordinance passed by the said Sangunian of the city, it cost only 4,000 pesos. But the collecting public officer demanded 5,000 and indeed 5,000 was paid. When they said, when they said um, business, uh, when they said businessman, was asking for the receipt, the collecting public officer said he runs out of receipt. Truth is, if you open his drawer, there are still official receipt, forms of OR. But he wanted to conceal the excess collection, and so he said he runs out of receipt. He just issued a provisional receipt. And the said taxpayer left. He said, collecting public officer opened the public book and he placed therein the entire 5,000 pesos. And then he closed again the public book. In the afternoon, before he was about to leave, he remembered he has an excess collection of 1,000. And so he opened again the public book and he took the 1,000 pesos excess collection and thereafter went home. What farmer crimes had been committed by the said collecting public officer? First, the collecting public officer is liable for illegal exaction under Article 213, second paragraph. He is a collecting public officer. He is charged with the collection of this piece, business license piece, and he demanded an amount different from which is larger than that which is authorized by law. What is authorized by the ordinance is 4,000. He demanded 5,000. And he is also liable under the second act. He voluntarily failed to issue the OR, even if he has still OR forms. He deliberately did not issue it to conceal his success collection. Therefore, he is liable for illegal exaction under Article 213. He, he, op he placed it inside the public book. In the afternoon, he opened the public book and took the excess collection of 1,000. For that, he committed another crime. He committed malversation of public funds and property under Article 217. Again, illegal exception pertains only to violations on the rules of collection. If he malverts his collected amount, he becomes liable for malversation under Article 217. But isn't it that the 1,000 excess collection is private funds? The moment this collecting public officer opened the public book and placed there in the entire 5,000 collection, the entire 5,000 pesos becomes part of public funds. So when he opened it again and took the excess 1,000, what he is in effect taking is already part of public funds. The moment a public officer commingled private funds with public funds, the said private funds is no longer considered as such. It changes its nature to public funds. Therefore, when the collecting public officer removed the 1,000 pesos placed inside the public vote, he is in effect taking part of public funds he becomes liable for malversation under Article 217. 
Under Article 217, the elements of malversation are all present. First, the offender is a public officer or employee. He has funds or property in his custody by reason of the duties of his office. These are public funds or property that he has to account later to the state. And the public officer appropriated to, misappropriated, or consented, or through his abandonment or negligence, he permitted others to misappropriate the same. All the elements are present. X is a public officer. He has these funds in his custody. He has the duty to account it, to remit it later to the government. Yet, he misappropriated the said public funds by taking 1,000 pesos per in. Hence, he is liable for malversation of public funds and property. Malversation of public funds and property can be committed only by an accountable public officer. An accountable public officer is one who, by reason of the duties of his office, has received public funds and property, and he has the duty to account it later to the government. Based on the last elements of malversation, there are two kinds of malversation. We have malversation through dolo or deliberate intent. When the public officer himself appropriated, misappropriated, or took the public funds. And the other one is malversation through culpa or negligence. When by reason, when by reason of his abandonment or negligence, the said public officer allowed, permitted, the malversation, the misappropriation, the appropriation of the public funds in his possession. So these are the two kinds of malversation. So what if the accused public officer was charged of the crime of malversation of public funds under Article 217? Let us give these... Um, Concrete example. The, um, in this school, whenever the checks, this is a public institution, whenever the checks representing the salaries and allowances of the teachers and the personnel would arrive, the treasurer, upon receipt of the check, would give it to the principal. The principal would go to the bank and encast the check. The principal would return to the school and give the set and cash amount to the treasurer. The treasurer will distribute it to the teachers and the personnel of the school. So here comes the checks representing the salaries of the teachers, the allowances of the teacher, plus this time differential phase. So the amount is quite larger than the usual amount. The treasurer, upon receipt of the checks from the DEX, gave it to the principal. As usual, the principal went to the bank, to land bank to encash the check. However, after encashing the check, instead of going back to the school to give the encash money to the treasurer for distribution to all teachers and personnel, this time, the said principal went to Manila. And he never remitted the said amount. And because of that, the principal was charged for violation of Article 217, malversation of public funds and property. He was in possession of these NCAS checks. He has the obligation to account it later. However, the said amount was gone. And so he was charged for malversation through dolo or deliberate intent. The law presumes he appropriated, took, and misappropriated the said and cash amount. During the trial of the merits, however, in his testimony, he stated that he is not the one who took the said amount. According to him, from after encashing the check, he went to Manila, took a flight to Manila, because according to him, he suffered severe chest pain. And he wanted to be treated by the best doctors of Manila. After treatment, however, on his way home, 
he was held up by two men at gunpoint. And the two men took the bag that contains the cash amount. So he said, he is not the one who appropriated and misappropriated and took the said amount, but the old doctors. After trial of the marriage, the judge convicted him of malversation through negligence. Although the information alleged malversation through deliberate intent, the judge convicted him of malversation through negligence, the judge reasoning, because of his negligence, the old doctors were able to misappropriate the funds in his possession. He now filed his appeal, questioning the decision of the judge on the ground that when the judge convicted him of malversation through negligence or culpa, the judge violated his right as an accused to be informed of the nature of the cause of accusation against him because the crime charge is malversation through dolo or deliberate intent. Is this argument correct? In a long line of cases, the Supreme Court said the said argument is wrong. Supreme Court said, the dolo or the culpa, the deliberate intent or the negligence in malversation are merely modalities in the commission of the crime. But whether malversation is committed through dolo or through culpa, the same act of malversation is penalized under Article 217 and the same penalty is prescribed by law. Hence, it is immaterial whether it is through dolo or through culpa. Therefore, the judge is correct in convicting the accused of malversation through culpa or negligence, although the information alleges malversation through dolo or deliberate intent. Second, the Supreme Court said, malversation through culpa or negligence is necessarily included in malversation through dolo or deliberate intent. But, what if X was a public officer and uh, as a public officer, he was assigned this car from the government. This is a car assigned to him. It is MR to him. And he is the, he is the one using this car. One time, after a meeting, he arrived to his office. He has to immediately get out for another meeting for lunch. And so, upon alighting from the car, he failed to realize that he left the door of the car open. And the ignition key was inside. And then thereafter, he went back. He went to his office anyway. He will be only a few seconds. After taking something from the office, he went down to board the car. But the car was gone. The car was already gone. It was taken by Y, who was standing nearby. What crime has been committed by the said public officer? The public officer is liable of malversation under Article 217. He is an accountable public officer because this car has been assigned and are to him by the government and he has the obligation to return it later after his service in the government. But by reason of his negligence, he allowed someone to misappropriate this car. Therefore, he is liable under Article 217, Malversation of Public Property. The accused, a public officer, was charged with malversation under Article 217. In the information it was alleged, after audit, it was discovered that all the amount, all the funds, public funds, which has been given to him, were gone. And because of that, he is liable under Article 217. During trial of the merits, however, when this public officer testified, he said that these funds, which has been entrusted to him, were for the purpose of a feeding program, as stated in the ordinance. Feeding program for all school children in public schools in their place. And according to him, since the feeding program has not yet started, 
and will start in the latter part of the year, he deemed it proper to use it first for their constituents who were the victims of a fire that broke out in a certain barangay. That was his testimony in court. And so because of his testimony, the judge realized he did not misappropriate the funds. Therefore, although the information alleges malversation under Article 217, the judge convicted him of technical malversation under Article 220 based on the evidence presented in court. Is the judge correct? The judge is wrong. If the information alleges malversation under Article 217, it is wrong for the court to convict him of technical malversation under Article 220. Reason is, malversation under Article 217 and technical malversation under Article 220 are two separate and distinct crimes. One is not necessarily included in the other. Therefore, in that case, since it is evident that the crime committed is technical malversation, but the information alleges malversation under Article 217, the judge has to acquit the said accused. And the public prosecutor must file a new case for technical malversation. But it is wrong to convict an accused of technical malversation in an information that alleges malversation under Article 217. In malversation under Article 217, funds and property had been entrusted to the public officer for safekeeping, for custody. Whereas, in technical malversation, funds and property has been entrusted to a public officer for its administration or application for a public use, earmarked by law or ordinance. In malversation under Article 217, the said accountable public officer misappropriated, appropriated, or took the said public funds entrusted to him. In case of technical malversation under Article 220, the public officer applied the said funds and property entrusted to him to another public use, other than that for which it is earmarked by law or ordinance. Therefore, if the information alleges malversation under Article 217, it is wrong to convict him of technical malversation under Article 220. But what if the public officer, a city administrator, administrator was charged with the crime of technical malversation under Article 220? The amount of 500,000 pesos allocated in the budget for the feeding program of school children was entrusted to the city administrator. However, the city administrator applied it to another public use and that is the shelter program of the said government. And it was discovered and so he was charged of violation of Article 220, technical malversation. But he argued he acted in good faith. According to him, this shelter program is of more necessity first than that of the feeding program. So according to him, he acted in good faith. Will his defense lie in his favor? His defense would not lie in his favor. The reason is technical malversation under Article 220, according to the Supreme Court in the case of Isidoro versus People, is malum prohibitum. Therefore, even if he acted in good faith, even if there is no criminal intent on his part, there can still be conviction. Intent is immaterial, good faith or bad faith is immaterial. The very act being punished is the transfer of funds from that to which it has been earmarked by law or ordinance to another public use. The crime arises regardless of intent or good faith. Can malversation be committed by private individuals? Malversation can be committed by private individuals 
if the said private individual acted as the co-conspirator, if the pub, if the private individual acted as an accomplice or an accessory of the said public officer, if the private individual has been designated as the one in charge of public concert property, whether of the national or local government, and the team is appropriated the state. And lastly, when the private individual has been designated as the administrator of funds and properties, these attached and deposited by public authorities and he misappropriates the same. In these four instances, a private individual also becomes criminally liable for malversation of public funds and property. Can private funds and property be the subject of malversation? If private funds and property had been seized, attached, deposited by public authorities, these, pub these private funds and properties become in custodial legis, in custody of the law. The moment they are misappropriated or appropriated, the crime committed is malversation and not theft or qualified theft.